Cool. And we are going to start a new series here called Songs. And this series is where we're going to talk through a song that we sing, but sometimes we struggle to apply it or live it out in our lives. And I get to kick it off. So you guys ready? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just ask you to come. God, we ask you to speak through me and, and God, that I just pray this message will hit us right uh, where you want it to, God, and that you just reveal your truth to us and that we hear your truth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Awesome, so we're singing, or we're gonna talk through a song. And, and so first I wanna start with music. I love music. Do I have any music lovers out there? Like music hits me in my heart and my feelings where words can't express how I feel, I feel like music can. But what's funny is I, I don't do anything with like music, right? You never see me up here on stage. I don't play a lot of instruments. I have over the years, but there's one story that just gets me. And my senior year of high school, 2007, Clover High School, upstate South Carolina, I had an opportunity to sing in a quintet. That's five parts, okay? Just like up here today during worship, you had five wonderful singers all across the stage. I had the opportunity to do this in front of my high school. And I totally blew it, okay? I'll give you that right up. So we were doing this part. It was a Handel song. If you guys any classical music people out there, and every part had their own solo. So I was singing the bass line. And so when it was time for the bass line to come, I lost where I was. And then it was like, how, how do you start back? Like you're trying to hit the note. You're trying to remember what word they're on. You're trying to remember where they are. And it got to the point where the bass is supposed to be going and the solo is there. And like people were looking at me side to side being like, it's your turn, it's your turn, sing. And I'm like. <laughs> and no lie, I didn't know what to do. So I put the mic down and I walked off stage. And this is in front of hundreds of people, 2007. If there's anybody who went to high school with me, hopefully you don't, not, you don't remember this. But it was one of those times where I started to feel so disappointed and embarrassed. I was ashamed of the job that I did, the practice that I put in. I thought I was ready to go and I dropped the ball and I was, I was overwhelmed. I was embarrassed and I was ashamed. Listen, has anybody ever done anything that you're ashamed of? Yeah. All right. If you raise your hand, look to your neighbor to the right or your left of you and tell them what you did. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Don't do that. You don't have to do that. There's grace here. You don't have to do that. But we do things that we're ashamed of. And, and so I want to talk about a little bit of shame today. And I'm going to give you two definitions. The first one is guilt up on the screen. Guilt is the position of being accountable for our sins and our shortcomings. When we mess up, we feel guilt. That's honestly a little bit normal. It, it just happens. But shame, and we're gonna talk about that right here, shame comes in, and shame is the process of being defined by our shortcomings and sin. What happens is when shame comes in because of our guilt, it starts to at attack our identity, and we start to believe that we're part of, of what we did. So if I've done something bad, guilt comes in. When shame comes in, it attaches to my identity, and now, I'm bad because I did something bad. And that's not the truth, but that's what the enemy wants to distract us with. He wants to point that out. And so when you do something wrong in life, whatever it is, fill in the blank, shortcoming or sin, the enemy is going to attack that by putting shame in your life. And it's gonna change how you view yourself. You might think that story's uh, funny that I got nervous and I walked off the stage, but it's true. And through that, I mean, I literally have started to form beliefs in my head of this is why I don't play in front of people. This is why I don't sing in front of people. This is why I don't get up on stage. And it has genuinely tormented me for years, even to the point where it messes up with my calling because I believe God's called me to do this, but I get so nervous and overwhelmed that sometimes I don't want to do this. And just because of one little thing, the enemy continues to distract. Now, he might distract you in different ways. Maybe the enemy wants to hold that little secret over your head that you don't want anyone to know about. Maybe the enemy points out your sinful past and how you're never gonna be good enough. Maybe it's your current sin. Maybe it's your financial debt, that mountain of debt, your credit card debt, and you don't want people to find out. Maybe it's your sexual past or addiction or maybe it isn't that thing that you did a couple years ago, just like me walking off stage, that you don't want anyone to know. And I haven't shared that story until recently, but that story literally has changed my thoughts and beliefs when it comes to me being up on stage because of how embarrassed I am. The enemy attacks that shame and makes it part of your identity. And then you feel dirty, broken, unwanted, 
unworthy, pitiful, fill in the blank, right? And the enemy attacks that and it makes you start to believe that's who you are. So in this series, we're going to be talking through songs that we sing, but sometimes we struggle to apply. And I chose a song that we sang today. It's an oldie. It's a goldie. It's my favorite, but it's all to him I owe. And we're going to talk just specifically about the chorus here, and we're going to break it down line by line. It's a good song, right? You guys like that? I think honestly, one of the reasons why I love this song is I've never had to sing it up on stage, butcher it and walk off. So I, I, the good news is I'm not going to sing it. You don't have to deal with that one, but we are going to walk through it. And again, we're going to start line by line. The first line of all to him I owe is Jesus paid it all. Good news. Everybody say great news. We're all sinners, all right? Listen, the enemy does a really good job for me, maybe, maybe for you, but he loves to distract me and tell me that I'm the only person who struggles with that, so I can't talk about it. You notice that he does that, but we're all sinners. We all have our junk. We all have our stuff. So in Romans 3.23, right up here on the screen, we're going to read it. It says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Amen. I'm excited that we all have messed up. We all have things that we're ashamed of. I'm excited about it because that's one lie we can scratch off right now. Because the enemy can't tell you you're the only person who struggles with that. You're not. And so Jesus paid it all. We all know this story. Becky did a great job talking about what Jesus did by dying on the cross today. But I'm gonna share a couple more verses in 1 Peter 2, verses 24. It says, he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed because Jesus paid it all. That's it. There's nothing that you can do. Everybody say nothing. There's nothing that you can do to make the Lord love you any more or love you any less. That's a saying that I keep saying. It's been on my heart for the past couple of weeks. I've been telling our students, I've been talking about it. And gee, kids, there's nothing that you can do to make the Lord love you any more or any less. He died for us. He paid that price. Colossians 1, 13 and 14 says this. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins. Listen, Jesus, when he came to this earth and he died on the cross for our sins, he defeated death, he defeated our sins, he defeated it all, rose again. Come on, that's something to be excited about. He paid the price. We don't have to pay the price for our sins. We should, it's our fault. It's our sins. It wasn't Jesus' sins. But what happened was he came and he paid the price, point blank. And if we truly grasped that and understood that, that would be the end of the message. We can go home, we can eat lunch, we can watch football, but we struggle and, and I struggle sometimes with understanding that, that what that means, that Jesus paid it all. If we truly understood that, we would walk different. If we truly understood that, we would talk different. We would love different. We would serve different. We would act different. If we truly understood that, the next line of this song says, all to him I owe. How do you pay back that debt? Anybody? How do we pay that back? You can't. You can't. There's nothing that you can do to make the Lord love you anymore or love you any less. But what happens is we want to. We want to feel better about ourselves, so we got to do nice things, right? So we give a little bit of money to the homeless person to make us feel better about ourselves, or we go to church every time the door's open to feel better about ourselves, or we serve in every area we can to feel better about ourselves, and we continue to try to earn something that, that we can't earn. We try to pay back something that we can't pay it back. We can't. Now, listen, David says something really good. David, when we talk about David in the Bible, there's David and Goliath. You've heard those stories. David who became king. You've heard those stories. David and Bathsheba. You hear those stories. The Bible actually calls David a man after God's own heart. When I read some of those stories, I don't see a man after God's own heart. But the Bible says it. But when you read the whole story of his life and you don't just stop in certain moments, you can understand because David had a heart posture towards the Lord where he realized what the Lord wanted. And we're gonna share this up on the screen. This is Psalm 51, 16 and 17. It says, for you will not delight in sacrifice or I would give it. You will not be pleased with a burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart. Oh God, you will not despise. 
Listen, David knew it wasn't about the offerings that he could bring or the things that he could do. It was a heart posture. And when you read the book of Psalms, when you read stories about David and you see how he just poured his heart out to the Lord, Lord, use me, Lord, love me, Lord, don't disappear. Lord, keep coming back. Lord, give me your blood. Like he knew that he wanted to have a relationship with the Lord. He knew that he needed God to show up every single day in every single way. And it wasn't about the things that David did that made him a man after God's own heart. It was about how uh, David's heart was uh, positioned to the Lord, where he said, hey, God, whatever you need from me, whatever you want from me, use me. And and that relationship between him and the Lord is where a lot of our worship songs come from today is those book of the Psalms and those stories that he wrote. And we take them and we make songs and sing out of them. And those all came from David's heart. David's heart was postured towards the Lord. Sin, the next line, it says, sin has left a crimson stain. From the beginning of the Bible, we talk about sin pretty quickly. But one thing that I thought was really cool is as I was studying and reading up on shame, I I, I saw this, that shame was in the Bible before sin was in the Bible. Let's read it. Genesis 2.25, it says, and the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. And we're not ashamed. And so we know the story of Adam and Eve. What happens is Adam and Eve were told not to eat of this fruit. Guess what? They did it. We're human beings. We mess up. That's just who we are sometimes. But what happens is a serpent, Satan, decides to distract Eve and tell her, hey, you want this. You need this. It's good for you. There's wisdom that's going to come. There's knowledge that's going to come. You're going to see what's going to happen. Eat of this fruit. And so she ate of the fruit. She convinced her husband to eat of the fruit. And then let's read again. This is in Genesis 3, 7. It says, then the eyes of both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loin cloths. As we sin, the first thing we want to do is just cover it up. It's the first thing we want to do is we want to cover it up. Let me tell you a good truth today. Sin revealed, everybody sin reve- say sin revealed. sin revealed is sin that's lost its power. How good is that? Sin revealed is sin that's lost its power. What happens is sin leaves a stain and we try to cover up stains. We try to hide stains. We don't want to talk about stains. And that's where the enemy continues to lie. And he lets that shame come in. And he just continues to whisper to you and talk to you. And you want to cover it up and you want to hide. But the good news is a sin revealed is sin that's lost its power. And we all struggle with sin, right? We just talked about that at the very beginning for all have sinned. And so I, you know, I love it like this. Okay, on Thursday nights, if you guys have never been to Grace Life on a Thursday night, it is the kickoff to our weekend. It's the first service. It's the same exact service that you're getting here on Sundays. And it's great. I'll, I'll sell a little ad real quick, okay? It's great for you guys if you want to travel on the weekend. You can come check out a Thursday service. You don't miss it. Or if you're working on a Sunday, it's a great opportunity. But Thursdays, we have hot dogs. Okay, it's free food. I told you from the beginning of my message, I'm always down with free food. Like, that's what I tell our students. I've been doing youth ministry uh, here as one of the directors for like six or seven years. And I, I open anything up with there's free food and we get 100 students. Like, it's the craziest thing. So free food gets me. On Thursday nights, we have free food. We have hot dogs. And there is something special about how this church smells on a Thursday. All right. I don't eat hot dogs often. To be honest with you, I don't really even like hot dogs, but there is just something about being here on a Thursday night and smelling the aroma of a hot dog in this building. It's like the Lord's chicken, but the Lord's hot dog. Okay. I love it, but I get scared every Thursday that I have to be on stage or if I got to teach in G kids or if I'm doing communion, I get so nervous that I'm going to get a stain on my dress shirt. So like I have come up with some crazy ideas to eat hot dogs. I've done the fork and knife thing. You know, even even in first service, they made fun of me, but like I've done the whole like stretch out, like try not to get it on your shirt and like take a bite because I don't eat plain hot dogs. I don't know about you. I want it full. I want it ketchup, mustard. If I had chili and slaw, I would go all out. But I like messy hot dogs. But what would happen is if I got a stain on my shirt and then I had to come up here for communion, how embarrassed would I be? You know, that would, you would see me do something funny, like probably like hold my communion cup or the microphone like really awkwardly like this so you guys wouldn't see it. What was even better is today during first service, uh, one of my leaders and G-Kids totally had a mustard stain all on their white shirt. I made fun of them for it. But right, so like I'll be holding the mic just like this. I would be trying to cover it up. I'll be trying to cover it. I would walk like this. Jesus loves you. 
He died. Like, I would try to do everything I can to cover up that stain because I would be embarrassed that there's a bright yellow mustard stain on my dress shirt in front of all you guys. But that's what sin does. When we have sin that enters our life, we want to try to cover it up. We want to try to hide. We don't want people to see it. And so all we do is just focus on it. We try to cover it up. We don't get to have the conversations that we should have in the hallway because I've got a mustard stain in my shirt. So, hey, I'll talk to you later. No, but sin distracts us and the enemy continues to distract us. And then when shame sets in, it really starts to make us think that's who we are. That's not who we are. Because what we read earlier was Jesus paid it all. And all to him I owe. Yes, sin does leave a crimson stain, but there's good news. He washes it white as snow. Revelation 1, 5 says this at the very end of the verse. It says, to him who loves us and who has freed us from our sins by his blood. Amen, his blood covers it all. Let me give you a good picture of that. A couple of years ago, I had an opportunity to go to Montana, one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. We went to Glacier National Park. I'm a Southern boy, so I'm not a big fan of snow. Um, you know, but it was still really cool to see. But when we got there, it was kind of gross out. It, it was awkward uh, temperatures between like, it's not freezing, it's not super cold, but we knew that the next day it was gonna drop to like 17 degrees and they were calling for just a whole bunch of snow. Like snow that I never thought I would ever see in my whole life. Like it was like any Christian families that grew up watching Narnia, it was like something like that, like just beautiful. And, and so one night when we went to bed, it was kind of gross out, there was like, salt and mud and dirt all over the road. It was piles of ice on the side from where they tried to push the snow that earlier fell. And the next morning when I woke up, you just saw sun shining through the curtains. And, and I was like, oh, I, wanna, I wanna go open these up. And I opened up the curtains on our balcony and I overlooked and I just saw this sheet of snow like a blanket that covered everything. I mean, there was feet, cars were covered, trees and bushes were covered, the road was covered. And, and what I realized in that moment was when Jesus, in the song when it says that he's washed us white as snow is that's what it is, that we are covered by God's or Jesus' blood when he died on the cross, we're covered. And so now you just see this beautiful sheet of snow that covered the whole thing. And I was like, wow. You know, what I struggle with is I understand that Jesus came and died for me. I get that. I totally get that. And I love that. But for years, I have continued to try to earn it back. I have continued to try to make myself feel better. I even have this actually tattooed on my body. I have the line, all to him I owe tattooed them up because for years I just couldn't try to see, all right, God, what else can I do? All right, I got to feel better about myself. I keep messing up and I would do things all for the wrong reason. And I never understood how God sees me. But when we make Jesus our King and he washes our sin away and it says that he sees us as white as snow, I didn't grasp that he saw me that way because of what Jesus did. That blood covers my sin. It covers my past. It covers that laundry list of things that I have done. And he sees me different, but guess what? I didn't see myself different. I didn't see myself different. And I struggled with that for years. I still sometimes struggle with that. But just like that picture of fresh snow that fell and it covered everything, all you saw was that just moment of beauty. And it makes me go back just to think that's how Jesus sees me. And if Jesus sees me that way and I saw myself that way and I know that he paid it all, how would things be different in our lives? Would we talk to people differently? Would we love people differently? How would our workplace look? How would our families look if we truly grasp that Jesus paid it all? I think we grasp that for the most part, but, but he sees us different. We gotta learn to see ourselves different. But what happens is the enemy continues to lie and shame continues to come in and we start to identify with what we did, but it's not who we are. And if we understand that, how could God use us differently? I got a question for you today. How are you trying to earn it? How are you trying to pay it back? Maybe you're showing up here every week just because you wanna feel better about yourself. I have a friend who says this and I laugh every time I hear her say it. But she says, I gotta get my worship in, like it's a task. Gotta get your worship in. I've seen people, oh, I, I haven't read my daily scripture. Let me go ahead and pull that out on my app real quick so I can read it. Are we doing things for the right reason? Where are our motives at? Let me share it to you like this. We all have a mom. There was a mother who, who gave birth to you, who carried you for nine months. And, and that's something that like, I, I'm just so glad that I, I don't necessarily have to do because I mean, the, the thing that comes with it, 
the eating habits. You wanted to change what you eat. You can't eat that anymore. The smells make you want to throw up. You can't get comfortable. You got to get a my pillow buddy where you got to sleep on this side or roll on this side. And, and, and you women who have had pregnancies, men who have been with your wives while they had pregnancies, like I respect women. But as that baby came out, that baby didn't think, all right, every Christmas and every birthday, I have to pay this woman back. So let me buy her something. No, oh, why do you buy gifts for your mom? Because you love her. And that's the same thing where I think David did it really, really well. David did it really, really well. It wasn't about the burnt offerings. It wasn't about the things that he could do. It was a heart posture. And just like we'll never be able to pay back our mom, you'll never be able to pay back God, but because you love him so much, he deserves everything. And that relationship changes that thought process. And now it's not that you're doing these things because you wanna feel better about your, yourself. You're doing these things because you truly love God and you want him to know that and he deserves it all. He deserves it all. The truth is, is he deserves your giving. He deserves your loving of other people, your neighbors, the people you don't wanna love. He deserves your forgiveness, your forgiveness for others. He deserves that too. Because of what Jesus did, him paying it all, he deserves your serving and your worship. You'll never be able to pay him back, but I think your love for him will show it. It's not about what you gotta do. It's not what you gotta do. The Bible makes it very, very clearly in Romans 10, 9. It says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. That's all it is. Confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord. And he will take that long list of sin and shame and guilt and all that. He'll crumble up and throw it away. You gotta let it go, all right? You gotta let it go. He's already done all the hard work. You gotta let it go. But that's the good news that all you gotta do is confess. And, and as I sing this song, this song again has just had so much volume in my life. The Lord has spoke to me. I mean, the only tattoo I've ever got right here has this one in it because it, it still speaks to me that there's nothing that I can do, that Jesus paid it all, but I can give him my life. And I do it not because of what he's done. I do it because I love him and he loves me. Man, but listen, going back to my story of me messing up on, on stage and blowing it, that's a 100% a true story. And it has really interfered with my life a lot. Uh, honestly, it, it's made me not wanna get up on stage and speak to people. I get nervous about what if I mess up? What if I just freeze again? You know, like even this week as I was planning this message, I, I struggled with that thought process and I had to continue to just pray it through. Like, no, God, you're calling me to do this. You're good. You love me. This is your will. Like, and I had to keep speaking those truths over me, but listen, it had hindered. I, I formed a lot of beliefs about, man, I'll never sing on stage. I'll never do this. And it really messed with me. And just like, just like my stuff messes with me, there's things that the enemy is gonna try to lie to you, try to manipulate, try to convince you other ways. But if you would just surrender and say, God, what do you want from me? How are you gonna use me? You know, and you just realize that he paid it all. That there's nothing that we gotta do and that he washes white as snow. And if we saw ourselves like that, how bold would we be? Would we lead that life group that God wants us to lead? Would we serve and church or in a different area if we saw ourselves the way? Because I think sometimes we, we don't serve an area because, man, we don't want people to find out who we really are. Or I don't know if I can control my mouth that long around people. You know, maybe that you're, you're just not the parent you wanna be because you don't think you're good enough. And the enemy has continued to lie to you. And it's so funny, I, I love that one. I've actually heard that one recently from a parent that they don't wanna be in their kids' lives because they don't think they're good enough. And it's like, that's causing more issues, just be in their lives. Show them that you're messed up, just like all of us, right? It's so funny, but the enemy lies to us. He wants to distract you from what God has for you. But if you just knew that he paid it all, all to him I owe, that sin has left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow, how would things be different? How would things be different? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just ask you to come today. God, I pray that we start to see ourselves the way that you see us as, as white as snow. God, thank you for that. Thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for our sins when we didn't deserve it. 
We didn't deserve Jesus to come, but he did because he loved us so much. And so God, I pray as we go on our way, as we go back into the world, that whenever you call us to do something, that we will remember that, yes, we wanna do it because we love you. And and God, that you see us different, no matter how our friends see us or how our work sees us or or whatever, that you see us white as snow. And, And so God, I just pray that we walk in that boldness that we remember that Jesus paid it all and all to him I owe. And even when sin comes in and it leaves the stain, I'm not gonna cover it up because you see me white as snow. So God, I pray we remember that. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. We're gonna actually sing this song together. So we're gonna go through this chorus a couple times. And, and however you wanna relate, if you wanna stand up, if you wanna worship, but we're gonna go through this song just a couple times and, and then we'll come back together. So let us sing. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. One more time, just one more time. Oh, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Amen. Listen, some of you guys in the room, you might have a long laundry list of of sin and shame. Now Jesus did die for you, but because you haven't confessed with your mouth and believed in your heart that Jesus is Lord, that that list is still there and it might haunt you. And I wanna give you an opportunity. Remember, we talked about it. Jesus came and he died. He defeated death in the grave. And he wants to wipe away that list. And so if you have never made Jesus your king, And today I wanna give you an opportunity. And so you're just gonna say a prayer just like this. You don't have to say it out loud. You say it between you and the Lord and just repeat after me. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. God, you loved me before I even knew you. So God, I wanna find this freedom and I wanna find great meaning and great purpose in your kingdom. Amen. Let's let's give it up to the people who pray that prayer today.